All right, we got this next one. You already got to boot it up right there, bro. An incredible, incredible movie called Rebel Ridge that should have yes. been played in theaters. But you Can't know what? Believe it, it wasn't. I don't know how it's not, dude. It is the newest one from Jeremy uh, Saunier, who uh, it, honestly, I went back because we had talked about Blue Ruin for a 2014 bracket that's up now. You mm-hmm. can go check that out. Um, I think Green Room is one that has just really lasted in terms of like what it's about. I- I've traveled mm-hmm. through that area <laughs> of Green Room. <laughs> Ooh, that part of the country is scary. Um, but it is just it, it is just a. Uh, uh, really aged well in my opinion and, and hearing him talk about this movie was also really cool uh, e- even years later to find out so much stuff that he put in there so coming into Rebel Ridge I was really excited because Aaron Pierre a lot of people see this as a star making role and it is because it's him mm-hmm. leading we know him as mid size sedan no one sees <laughs> foe but we really liked them I think you saw Brother as well I thought he was fantastic in that but that's an indie movie mm-hmm. I can recognize that we also really liked them in the Underground Railroad, but that's also a TV series that we also complained Prime didn't really push out. Mm-hmm. Rebel Ridge, where everyone has a Netflix account premiering on there, is definitely something that's putting him on the radar for a lot of people, and rightfully so, bro. Just quickly, yeah. they had said John Boyega was doing this, and I have nothing against John Boyega. I think John Boyega would have been good. But sorry, man. <laughs> Aaron Pierre just stands there and commands the screen. I thought the first half of this movie... Oh my, I thought it was, it was gearing up to be a five-star movie. Mm-hmm. And that was a good, it was a good end. Yeah. What'd you think of it? Yeah. Uh, a lot of what you mentioned. Uh, let, let's just start with the John Boyega thing first, because I do think you can look at this movie, and I think it would have been a great part for Boyega. I think, ultimately, though, it would have been a different character, one that is a little bit more focused on his attitude. Uh, Boyega is great at like delivering a anger laced line. And and mm-hmm. I think a lot of it would have come down more to like how he handles the dialogue. But there's something about the way, the way that Aaron Pierre just sort of holds himself, the way he can hold the screen. He's a physical presence in a way that I've never really gotten from John Boyega that, that makes this different and puts this in like the territory of those like classic new sheriff in town movies, like the walking like talls Western, yeah. and even like your you know roadhouses and stuff like that like it, it he just really fits that mold so well and you talk about the first half of this movie uh being a phenomenal five star i think the first 45 minutes may mm. have been the most locked into a movie i've been all year Ridiculous. there's like yeah. not a false note hit it wastes no time within yep. two like two minutes two seconds even you're you're just like fully into this story and and just the mounting obstacles of this situation. Saulnier does just a masterful job of starting you at a very tense situation and only mounting things on top of it for about 45 minutes. There there is a lot uh, beyond that 45 minutes that is still, you know, very compelling and very interesting yeah. in just the way that it's sort of plays out the situation around the idea of civil forfeiture because uh, the sort civil of forfeiture. inciting incident. Yeah, the, inc- the classic right? cinematic idea, right? And um, it had me. But, I was like, damn. Yeah. Keep going. It's like, d- yeah, damn, civil forfeiture, right? But like, you know, it's all around this incident of the these cops claiming this cash that he has on him, right? And yeah. the, the way that that spills out to reflect the situation of the, these small town cops and uh, the the tough position that he's in with this ticking clock involving uh, his cousin who needs to make bail and uh, the, it just it, it's so it, it's such a fully realized world that mm-hmm. feels so like tangible and, and uh, in our own reality. I, I think it's just masterfully done. You know, Salni is so great at making these like almost like rural thrillers that mm-hmm. are kind of small town badass. And, and really, really gritty and real. Um, it, it probably ends up being a bit over long. They end up having all these like plot threads to resolve and uh, mis- miscues and sort of like uh, plans that get foiled. And it loses the tightness that it has in the beginning. But right. I still think the whole thing is riveting. It, it's really cool uh, action, particularly the way that they have... Aaron Pierce's character sort of maintain this kind of like um, soft spoken. Uh, 
Yeah, yeah, the the calm, cool, collectedness, but also the way that he doesn't sort of turn into this like bloodlusty hero, right? Like he mm-hmm. he manages to navigate these intense situations without like killing a lot of people or even incapacitating that many people. He he always knows how to kind of just like de-escalate and disarm, and it it ends up being a really cool kind of like. Uh, methodology for for an action hero right because we are we especially recently i feel like we're so much more used to denzel washington in the equalizer just vanquishing dudes yeah. but uh well, he it's a bit different when he he does too but like he's also doing a lot of like non-lethal or less lethal rounds yeah. uh, and I, I thought that was a very interesting part they get into the backstory of like when you have a military person did they serve overseas or not and the mythos that comes with like, are you are you as dangerous if you didn't see combat and the like? And mm-hmm. and I think that there's a, like you said, he really builds this world where it's not just these corrupt cops that aren't just doing it for you know what you assume is just racial reasons, but it gets deeper into this idea of like what what funding are they getting and what causes them to choose right. these paths that we've seen and like you said, uh, throwback westerns and and uh, like. Y- I was thinking of the rundown with the, with the rock and mm-hmm. stuff just coming in because uh, they had pitched it as not being a revenge thriller, but like a justice western where he's he's not he's just coming in to correct a wrong and he could leave at any mm-hmm. point, but he wants to make sure that that gets set. Uh, and going off of what you said, bro, he doesn't even like punch anybody for the first mm-hmm. like forty something minutes. You have this man's presence looking like he can beat up every single cop if he wanted to. But he speaks it out. And I love the idea that Jeremy approaches uh, the dialogue like action in and of itself. And that's what made it stand out more. Because we've been watching this guy. And this is the first action movie we've seen him in. He has been doing dramas. This is a man of a bigger stature who knows how to be intimate on camera. Mm -hmm. And... He killed it, bro. He he is uh, exceptional in this movie. I think just the the frustration that he has. (laughs) There's this one line right at the beginning. He goes, this... This can't be legal. It's just there's yeah. so much weight on it that it builds up to this one point where he it almost gets meta where he says one of the lines like it's an 80s throwback and he goes, ah, I put too much on that, didn't I? Yeah. Oh, that, I love that. <laughs> to to too me, much sauce towards, on that. yeah, towards the end of it is where it gets a little rocky for me because I like this idea where it's almost like it felt real. I'll, I'll, I'll agree with you with the equalizer where it's like, all right, I, I like Denzel going super crazy. But at a certain point, it's like. You got a particular set of skills and you're using them in only a way a movie can. This mm-hmm. felt like a dude who's doing everything in the legal system to get through it the way it would happen. Like it's not mm-hmm. it's going to end up bloody, but this is how like things would occur. He would come here, 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 do that. Try to beat the clock like you were saying. And then by the second half, when it's become so tight. They get loosey goosey with it. I, I gotta look mm-hmm. the other way to be like, all right, I guess we we're turning in the stormtroopers now with all these cops firing and, and things missing. There is a mm-hmm. certain car sequence towards the end that I found dumb in like three different ways. I was like, I, uh, I guess it could happen that. No, it wouldn't happen though. Wait, why would they? Okay, if they're gonna go that far, then they would have just. Uh, I don't know, man. Yeah, it, 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 it got definitely a little bit. Be- it definitely becomes movie logic towards the yeah. end, but like in a way that I still felt like it doesn't, it's not like it takes a sudden departure. You know what I mean? Like right. it doesn't go, it doesn't go into like Looney Tunes. It just becomes a little no. bit like it, it only really makes sense because it's a movie. Yeah. You're looking the other way for it. And I don't even mind the way that it wraps up per se. Cause I know some people may have wanted a more definitive ending. I can, I can assume what's going to happen. It was just the way mm-hmm. that they had to play out a lot of the events. And it's like one of those, like when you're rushing your, your, your first pages on your project are really good. And then the crunch line's coming. So you got to like <laughs> pick it up a lot faster. And I had heard, you yeah. know, obviously with the, with the running time and, and uh, them filming in like a hundred degree weather, I can only assume how much they had to get done and they couldn't make it as tight because that first sequence at the police station, when they got the hunters outside and he's going in, I'm like, yo, I like these movies where you're going mm-hmm. procedure by procedure. Um, mm-hmm. You know, that's that's one thing with yeah. films like Trap. I already look the other way. But that's a movie where I was like, hey, my man's done it in the past. I like when it's, you don't just have to chalk it up to like, oh, a convenience. Can you put that elbow grease to make it work? And the first hour of this movie... Damn, was it firing on all cylinders. I still recommend it. It is fantastic. I would have seen it in theaters if, if I had the opportunity to because the sound design. That's another part. That's so good. Um, and, and the acting all around. Shout out Don Johnson. Does a fantastic job playing. Mm-hmm. 
Don Johnson, no. Like, <laughs> <laughs> he came out on screen and he was like, isn't that my darn eye holes from Django? I was like, yes, that is yep. it. Uh, and then on top of that, uh, we also had some side characters with Anna Sophia Robb, who I thought was you know, a good character in the movie, not yeah. necessarily being the love interest, but someone who sees eye to eye to him and, and knowing the corruptness that's also happening uh, on the force and, and her backstory with her kid. Emery Cohen's my boy, bro. I've been shouting him out since forever. Place Beyond the Pines is a classic. Bike Riders. I, I thought he was the best accent work out of everybody in that. We know him as the boy from Brooklyn as well. The, I don't know if you saw the tweet where someone was Paul saying... Paul Walter Hauser? Hey, comment on that before I tell you what I got to say. <laughs> um, so Paul Walter Hauser... Somebody, uh, I think, mentioned that uh, they felt like Paul Walter Hauser would have been a good fit for the Emery Cohen role in Rebel Ridge and he commented on that that he passed on Rebel Ridge and the role went to or what was it that he passed it on Rebel Ridge bike and, the to, and Emery Ridge yeah he passed for one but he beat me out on another whichever one but it yeah, was yeah and then Paul Walter went out for bike riders but Emery beat him for that so yeah. that it's just kind of interesting that those are two guys who are occupying similar lanes for sure I, I for can sure. see it for sure but I thought no one put a gun to my boy's head to have to respond. It, <laughs> I thought the same thing. And then I read the original post and it was kind of saying like, yo, he's going for your spot. So in responding, you kind of, you kind of solidify it. Yeah, I got the upper hand. I got the spot over here. I'm the one passing on rolls. My G, <laughs> I don't know if you could do a place beyond the pines. I don't know if you could do a Brooklyn, my G. But I don't need my man doing a, what was the Eastwood one? <laughs> Oh, uh, shoot. Uh, the Atlanta Jewel? security guard one. Richard Jewell? Richard Jewell. Keep your Richard Jewell. I, I love Paul Walter, but my G, don't cross. <laughs> don't cross my Emery Cohen. I love hey, Emery I got, Cohen. I found the tweet. I found the tweet. Oh. So he said, uh, the original tweet was Emery Cohen is vying for that Paul Walter Hauser slot. And yeah. Paul retweets it and says, he's a fantastic actor. I passed for on sure. the bike rider's role, but he beat me out clean for Rebel Ridge. We had it backwards. backwards. Lovingly jealous, Rebel Ridge was amazing. For sure. But my G, don't comment to a one that's that's putting y'all in tears. My, my, <laughs> Emery don't need your spot, my G. Emery is Emery. Shout out Emery. He's, he's, he's the go. And so is, so is Paul Walter Hauser. He's got a lot of other ones out there. Had a movie at TIFF. Yeah. Um, He's yeah, embarrassed. We'll talk about that uh on the next stream. And we're still waiting yeah. on that Americana one too, bro. Yeah, true. I think that did get picked up finally. Well, it gotta get released because that's that's gotta get out there. But overall <laughs> wrapping it in here, I am locking in Rebel Ridge. I'm gonna go with the four stars and a heart, bro. Ooh, okay. I can do I can do four stars and a heart with that one. Mm-hmm. And that's like even with that ending that I thought could have been stronger, so. Mm -hmm. uh, that's what I'm locking it in there for. It's definitely Rebel one of the strongest Ridge. movies of the year. Oh, easily. No, that, that first half is incredible. And just the idea that it can get you so invested in something that is happening out there. And like, it doesn't even politicize it. While it is a political thing, it just lets you know, like, that this is exactly how a thriller like this would break down. What is the injustice happening? And when you have a badass Reacher-like character, like, I want to, yeah. I would want to see another one of these. But what are you going to do, yeah. Rebel Ridge 2? Like, we've already <laughs> Rebel Ridged it out. <laughs> he's got to go to another town. <laughs> yeah, um, he's, maybe he's got another cousin, you know? Something like that. Yeah, I would love to just see him going from town to town, beating up people. Yeah. High Plains yeah. Drifter just coming in. That would be badass. But Rebel Ridge, highly, highly recommended over on Netflix. Other than that, We've got a, a slew of stuff um, that I know you'll be catching up on. A lot of it is horror, and we've got Halloween right around the corner. And I, yeah, I you got to tell October me which schedule. one of these are even worth catching up on. I got you. Yeah. There's a lot we'll, of movies. We'll, we'll do a little rundown here, and I'll tell you exactly what not to start with because uh, there's a lot of horror <laughs> movies out there, and uh, some of them are, are just a lot worse than, than other ones, if we're being honest. The biggest horror of them all. Do not watch Uglies, bro. I don't oh, care if geez. it's available in the comfort of your own home. You will be uncomfortable in your own home. 